Here are 18 things about the INA Flight Controller project that you most probably never really had any idea about. Even though people from all around the world are contributing to the INAF project, the core development team is located in Europe. No longer in the European Union, but still in the Europe. We have people from France, we have people from Great Britain, from Switzerland, from Portugal, from Germany and from Poland. Not exclusively, but still the majority of the core developers are currently located somewhere in the Europe. Believe it or not, but the first official INAF release, the INAF 1.0, was released five years ago. Back in 2016, we have released the INAF for the following targets, and there were only five of those. That was, I have to read this one because the list is maybe short, but some of the names are kinda hard to pronounce. CC3D, classic. Nazy, Absolute classic. SP Racing F3, yes, this board survived for quite a long. Sparky and something called RMDO. Who ever had RMDO? I never had this one. Most probably the killer feature and the most popular for the fixed wing pilots is the auto launch feature of the INAF. It's really truly amazing feature when you without much of the experience can just throw, toss your flying wing into the air and it will most probably, not always, but still most probably, safely take off and allow you to take control after that. For some time now, INAF can work almost like the PLC because you can use the programming framework to program the behavior of INAF and overwrite some of the default behaviors of it. Based on the different inputs, you can, for example, override the RC command that is directed into the flight controller. So, voltage controlled face safe, absolutely not a problem. You want to initiate return to home when you are just too far with the programming framework it is absolutely doable funny fact we do not really advertise this feature that much we do not provide that much of the tutorial still the user are making truly amazing programs with INAP that for example automatically manage flaps on your airplanes really mind blown what people are trying to pull off with the programming framework Another feature that we usually do not really advertise but is 100% possible is just launch and forget. INAF is capable executing the waypoint missions even in the failsafe condition. By default, of course, it will go home and try to land, but if you change one of the settings in the INAF configuration, when the mission is executed and you hit a failsafe, the mission will continue and the airplane, usually airplane, but not really always, will just finish the mission go where it started and maybe even land and do not crash that much? Yes, because INAF on both fixed wings and multi-rotor can land after the return home or the completion of the mission. It will go where it started, circle down or just slowly lower the altitude, at one point even disarm and just wait for you to pick up your model. Just like Betaflight, INAF is the far 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 cousin of the multi-wing. Yes, the same old multi that was written so many years ago for Arduinos and accelerometers and gyros taken from the Nintendo nunchucks. Sometimes people assume that INAF was forked from Betaflight. This is not true. Both the Betaflight and the INAF were really forked from the same source and this was back in the 2015, the Clean Flight project. And at the beginning we really shared a lot of the code base. Only after the years our roads really diverged and now we can really say that both INAF, Betaflight and also EmuFlight are separate projects that only share some of the concepts. If you don't know much about tuning the PID controllers, INAF will solve this problem for you as long as you are flying an airplane. Because the auto-tune built in into INAF really does an amazing job of setting the PID controller values so your airplane is flying exactly like it was supposed to be flying. It will tune the rates, it will tune the feet forwards and other aspects required for the great flying experience. But INAF is not only for airplanes, 
planes and drones. INAV can work on different other platforms. It can be used on rovers, it can be used on boats and everything that you really can put motors, servers, gyroscope and accelerometer on it. All thanks to super flexible mixer when you can assign any function to any motor or servo so that your device can keep the stability in the air or in the ground or in the water really depends 100% on you and your requirements. Yes, the flexible mixer greatly simplifies the process of setting INAV on different experimental platforms. Because you want to have the INAV on the big copter, absolutely not a problem. You want to have it on the single copter, no problem at all. Some kind of the rocket with only two servos and even the rocket engine, INAV can do it. Yes, it still will be on you to correctly set up everything and tune the PID controllers, but the mixer is so flexible that allows you to set it on, app, on any kind of the flying, walking, maybe not walking, but still driving or sailing kind of the autonomous vehicle. The upcoming INAV 4.0 release will give a pretty neat feature for all the users that are using INAV on the autonomous vehicles because during the planning of the mission you will have the possibility to see prediction, it's only a prediction but still, of how high above the ground, not only above the place where you armed or started your mission, your drone or airplane is. So it will be much simpler to try to avoid different kind of the hills, uh, elevations, uh, valleys and so on and so on that you might find when flying somewhere. Do you know that INAV is using sensor fusion and the Kalman filter? Yup, both sensor fusion and the Kalman filter. Out of the Kalman filter is only for the gyroscope prediction to give it better prediction of how really the gyroscope signal looks like, but the sensor fusion is there. But we are not using the sensor fusion to get the data from two gyroscopes at the same time. We are using sensor fusion to combine the information from the gyroscope accelerometer, magnetometers and GPS to have the information about very precise position and both the altitude. You can, and it's pretty fun to fly INAV without magnetometer and the GPS, because those two sensors are only an option, only an option when you want to use them. But if you don't, INAV delivers a pretty neat flying acro performance that works really pretty great on 7 inches, works pretty amazingly on CineWoops, and everything bigger than just the 5 inch multi rotor drone. So far, more than 300 people contributed to the INA flight controller project. And I'm only talking about the firmware, because if we add also the configurator, the list will grow. Last week when I checked, exactly 301 different developers contributed their code and their effort to make INAV better, believe it or not. But the oldest commit in the INAV repository comes from... 2012. Hard to believe? Not really. Please do remember that the INAV was forked from clean flight and the clean flight was forked from base flight and really the history goes on pretty 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 far into the darkness of the internet. In the September 2021 the INAV repository consists of more than 11,000 different commits. That means that on average there were 3.3 commits pushed into the INAF repository per day. And the total number of lines counting only the C language is more than 2 million lines of the code. Yes, your airplanes and drones, tanks, cars and boats are working thanks to more than 2 million lines of the code. And finally, a funny fact, and this is really a fact. Would you like to know why Constantine, the original creator of the INAF flight controller project, created INAF and forked the code from clean flight and added the GPS capabilities? You will never guess. Because, and I'm quoting him, because back then he could not afford the hardware that was compatible with Ardu Pilot. On the longer run, was it cheaper? I don't think so than to just buy something compatible with Ardo Pilot. But still, thanks to this amazing decision, we have INAV project with us and 
to be honest, it does pretty amazing job. I'm Paweł Spychalski, thank you very much for watching and happy flying!